This tutorial is going to be on the ALPR and how to set it up and the different functions that uh, are currently incorporated into the most basic version of the ALPR. When you have the ALPR, the first thing you want to do is to purchase your licenses. Licenses are based on per channel and the maximum number of channels that one ALPR server will take is four. After you get your licenses, open up the interface and come here to license management in the top left hand corner. The licenses are bound to the MAC address of each individual server. You can either register it online or register it offline depending on whether or not you have internet access at the ALPR server. If it's online, you go ahead and type in the license key uh, that you receive for the ALPR, and then you want to type in your ACTI member center account and password. If you do not yet have an account and password, all you have to do is go ahead and go to the ACTI website, and then you want to click on sign up in the top right hand corner, and you will be able to go ahead and create your account and your password. Afterwards, you should see your license key show up here. If you want to do offline registration, again, you just go to the ACTI website. You want to click on support, top of the page, and then you want to go ahead and click on license registration here under customer services. Next thing you want to do is the storage tab. You want to go ahead and make sure that you are going to store to a drive other than the C drive of the server itself, as if you record to the C drive, it can tax the system. And the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and show you the notice list function of the ALPR should that be part of your applications. So if you click on notice list, you'll see that you can create a blacklist and you can also create a whitelist. Okay, blacklists are for license plates that you want to be watching out for uh, that should not be in that area. Or you can create a whitelist in order to detect the license plates that you do want in the area. Okay, so right now I want to create a new list and I want this to be my blacklist. So I can go ahead and type in the list name and who it is that created this list. And then what you want to do is to come over here uh, to plate number and to go ahead and start adding in uh, the plates that are on your blacklist. You can change it to a whitelist as well and to edit the list name and the author here as well uh, and then just hit save. In the same way, if I want to go ahead and create a whitelist, uh, I can click new again, click on whitelist, make my list name, make my author, and hit OK and hit save. So you want to just click on the add button and then if you just click here uh, you will be able to go ahead and add in your plates and then you can keep uh, hitting the plus sign to add more and more plates in. And afterwards just hit the save button. So after I've added in all my plates in, okay, I can go ahead and toggle in between my two lists that I have or any more that I do have using the drop down menu here. Then we want to go ahead and go back to the main screen. Uh, so first you want to come over here to the left hand side. If you right click, you can go ahead and either add in your NVR or your ENR uh, that will have the cameras that you want to go ahead and analyze, or you can just add the camera itself. You can also add in a raw file. So if we want to go ahead and add in an NVR, and then you can go ahead and either uh, type in localhost should the MVR be on the same computer that the ALPR server is installed upon, or you can go ahead and type in uh, another IP address. It can either be a local IP address or it can also be a remote MVR. You can also go ahead and add a camera as well. And again, if you want to port forward the camera, you want to make sure you port forward the HTTP port, the streaming port, and the control server port located inside of network and port mapping of the camera's web configurator setup page. For today, what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and analyze a raw file. So once I go ahead and add that in, I will have my raw files listed under this tab, and here is the raw file that I just added in. So if you just want to view the raw file, you can of course click and drag it over and we'll begin to play it. You can also make it a uh, full screen view if that's what you uh, so choose or to click on it again to get rid of it. All right, but what we want to do is to go ahead and analyze the license plates that are coming through. So we want to right click on the main screen and we want to go ahead and create an analysis on this file. So we can go ahead and input a new analysis name And then what you want to do is you want to first click on the country of the license plates that you will be analyzing. Make sure that it's enabled. And then what you want to do is to go ahead and adjust the license plate size uh, so that you can tell the algorithm what kind of sizes of license plates it should be looking for. 
So if this is in the way uh, of your view, you can go ahead and click and drag uh, those maximum and uh, minimum license plates around. Uh, you can also uh, change the size either from manipulating the numbers on the left hand side or by directly using the arrows uh, on the page itself. So we want our maximum license plate uh, for this demo to be around this size and we want our minimum license plate to be a little bit smaller. The next thing you want to do is to go ahead and tell the server what areas you would like for it to analyze. So for this particular raw footage, most of the cars will be passing through here and through here for sure. And in addition, there are also cars that will be driving in the middle so we can feel free uh, to cover an area of the middle as well. Should you want to draw detection areas that are not boxes, you can feel free to use this icon here in the top right corner to draw your own shape. So you just click and drag and once you're done, you want to go ahead and double click and it will go ahead and make it a detection area. Should the detection area be kind of an odd spot that you want to be detecting. Say that's not what you want, you can go ahead and right click and hit remove. And if it will make it easier for you, you can also use the grid lines function in the top right hand corner to create grids on the screen. Uh, should that make it easier for you to detect what size your license plate should be or what size your detection area should be. The next thing is to enable the blacklist or you can enable the whitelist. So depending on your application, uh, there will be certain cars that you may not want in your area and those license plates you want to put on the blacklist. Or you want to keep track of what cars that you do want in your area and which of them are showing up and those you want to put on the whitelist. It's one or the other and if I check off blacklist, I can check off uh, one of the blacklists that I've put in and um, since I only have one, I can choose that one or I can go ahead and choose my whitelist. So for this demo, let's go ahead and do the blacklist. Uh, pre and the post buffer time is how much of uh, footage you would like it to capture right before and right after it does catch that license plate during the review of the analysis. So let's say we're okay with five and five. So after we're done, what we wanna go ahead and do is hit start. And then you can tell that it's analyzing by looking at the magnifying glass in the top right hand corner. On the main screen, should you want to see where you drew your boxes, you can right click again and tell it to show the algorithm regions. And if you want to see the analysis in real time, uh, you can go ahead and double click on the magnifying glass and it will go ahead and show you uh, the license plates. And so as you can see, uh, one of the cars that just passed through, it's on our blacklist. And so you're gonna see it list blacklist or if it's not on the blacklist, you'll just see that it went ahead and recognized the license plate anyways. So we can go ahead and let this uh, analysis keep running or we can go ahead and stop it. Uh, either way, you can go ahead and browse your analysis results. Uh, you want to make sure that it's the correct date. This particular raw file was from a while ago and so we're going to be searching from back then. When you have it ready, you want it to go ahead and click on the search button here. And it will go ahead and search for all the license plates uh, that have been captured so far. So let's go ahead and stop our analysis and hit browse and go to the proper date. So these are all the license plates that it detected. You can see that on the notice type, it will uh, note whether it was a blacklist license plate along with the confidence levels. Say you are searching for a particular blacklisted license plate. Okay, then you wanna go ahead and type it in here and click on search again, and it will go ahead and bring that up. You can also change the search range uh, if you don't want to manually change uh, the date and the time. In your analysis results, if you go ahead and double click on one of the license plates, it will go ahead and show you that pre-buffer uh, actual license plate capture and the post-buffer uh, video clip of that particular license plate as well. Afterwards, should you want to delete the analysis that you just made, you can just check it off here and click on the trash can. Uh, but say you wanna go ahead and export the information as well, you wanna click on this uh, export button here. And let's say the export file, we'll just call it export for now. So you can go to the desktop. And then if we go ahead and open up uh, that particular export folder, you're gonna see that uh, you're gonna get an Excel file that has the same exact information that you just saw in the analysis results. And you will also go ahead and also see a raw file of the videos and also of that particular image that you exported.
Okay, and if you want to export all of them, go ahead and highlight all of them and then you can export them all as well. And that concludes on how to set up and create the analysis for the ALPR server.